Sinead Burke, you spoke in a tent to maybe 40 people last year at Inspirefest Mm -hmm. and you told your story. Yes. You got up onto a stage in front of 1,000, 1,500 people yesterday and you told a different story of how things have changed for you since the last Inspirefest as well as what's going on with you and then introduce yourself to a whole different audience that are out there. How was the experience? It was very surreal speaking at Inspirefest on both occasions. Last year I spoke at the Fringe Festival and in a very small tent with approximately 40 people, Mm. as you said. And it was lovely. It was intimate. Uh, There was a couple of people that I knew in the audience, so it felt quite homely. And the nerves were at bay. But it was a completely different story this year. I had the fortune to have a cup of coffee with Anne O'Dea a couple of weeks prior to Inspirefest. And we were talking about the topic of my talk. And I said, oh, well, it's going to be about how I use social media. And she said, great, you can be on the social media panel. Excellent. And I kind of said yes flippantly, without really any regard as to, or any consideration as to who I would sit alongside. And then a couple of days beforehand, I realised that it was Leon Bell, who has changed Irish theatre forevermore, mm-hmm. and Dr. Sue Black, who just got an OBE from the Queen, and I was sandwiched in the middle of them. And nerves were most definitely not at bay. It was intimidating, surreal, but a real compliment to be positioned between two really extraordinary women. And for me, I suppose there was no risk. Um, I went out and I tried to have a really good time and tell some stories genuinely and enthusiastically as to way they impact my life, both about social media, how I use the internet for advocacy, for entertainment, for fashion and for lots of different question raising and awareness raising and the reaction was really uh, pleasant. I was really delighted. One of the big themes of Inspirefest is diversity. <laughs> diversity in gender, diversity in uh, background, diversity in socioeconomic situations, diversity in the counties that we're from, and all that kind of stuff. Upmead. Upmead. <laughs> um, <laughs> the networking here has been quite extraordinary. You've just wandered around and people have come up to you from all sorts of backgrounds to have a chat with you. I know, I'm now going to start pretending that I'm not Sinead. I'm like, no, my name is Kira. <laughs> right. No, I won't. Um, it's been amazing. For me, in terms of that whole conversation around diversity, it was something that Anne said in her keynote speech just after on Taoiseach and to Kenny. You know, when we talk about Inspirefest and when it reaches the media, often the quote that's pulled is that the gender diversity is 70% female, 30% male. And for a tech conference, that's really unusual. But Anne, and I came away from Anne's keynote, where she talked about the texture of conversations which happens at this conference because they have deliberately made an effort to be authentically diverse in their group of speakers. So it is those who don't conform conform to the gender binaries, it's those of us who are physically disabled, women of colour, lots of people from different jurisdictions, but it's not done in a tokenistic way. It's very, very authentic, it's very genuine, and people are on stage because they have an important story to tell and they've genuinely been change makers. And it's been revolutionary to the people who I have met, to the conversations that I've had. And yeah, the networking has been quite good. I don't have business cards. It's something that I keep saying I'm doing, but I have a, quite a clutch of them under my arm leaving Inspirefest, which I'm, I'm delighted about. So I'm looking forward to prolonging conversations and extending them either online or in person in the future. Hmm. When we talk uh, at different times, uh, sometimes I'm reminded that there's a big age gap between the two of us. But one of the things about Inspirefest for me as well is the massive age gap between everybody. We've heard from speakers who are nine years old and we've heard from speakers who are 70. Um, How have you found that? Uh, Last night I had the pleasure to be at the Fringe Festival for Inspirefest and I found myself much like at a wedding at the children's table and for me who considers themselves a millennial though I'm probably not categorised as a millennial it was lovely and intimidating and scary and wonderful to sit with Generation Z and to be informed about lots of different mediums and conversations that I don't know about and yeah I, I feel like I need to invest in eye cream pretty soon since those conversations but it's been so heartening and I think the theme of technology and steam and the arts and maths and technology and science really transcends any age group it's not limited to gender it's not limited to disability and most importantly what we're learning at something like Inspirefest is that it's not limited to age that you can have a conversation with somebody who's 80 years old who is venturing onto Twitter for the first time and the audience or venturing onto Facebook and the family it opens up to who they didn't know in you know America or wherever it is before and something like technology is a powerful tool for good and for bad and it can have a monumental impact on anybody at any age so get going Finally, you use social media a lot to talk about activism and things that you're really interested and passionate about. For those people who are at home who may not be as eloquent as you, perhaps, um, that feel that they have something to talk about and don't know what to say, what advice can you give them? 
Twitter is my tool of choice and I think sometimes it can be deemed an echo chamber we can be having the same conversations again and again but for me I think it really amplifies women's voices but as you said there are challenges with Twitter I mean you have to have a certain level of literacy in order to be able to communicate in 140 characters but I think technology is changing in a way like Twitter are investing in audio cards mm. so if language isn't your forte but perhaps you're a very good speaker or perhaps your linguistic skills are more developed than your written ones you will now be able to record an audio note and tweet it and for me that's revolutionary to my friends who perhaps have a visual impairment or are challenged in other ways than I'm not and I think we need to increase that diversity with technology and the only way that comes about is by having people of difference on boards within conversations at the boardroom table who can say I think it's a great medium but have you tried I think there's always a nervousness to anything I mean I sent out a tweet and then my mother will read it and I'll have a text in 15 minutes and she'll go what did you mean by that? So I think there's always an uncertainty when you put something in print or something online. My advice would be to go for it. And if it doesn't work and it flops, what happens? But if it gets a good reaction, you start a conversation, you make change. And I'd find the technology and the medium that works best for you. Give it a go.